Hello. So today we are going to talk about teacher pay and the kind of micro economy of individual or group language instruction. So I have been really interested in this topic for quite a long time, and I have included discussions about it in several videos. But I think it's time to just make a video about it. I think including it here and there in like review videos and whatever doesn't quite do it justice. So this is kind of inspired in large part by some drama that has arisen regarding a particular platform um, that all of this is alleged. I do not have inside knowledge or uh, verification of any of this, but there is quite a lot of information on Reddit available for anyone who wants to read it. That a platform called Baselang, which does um, offer unlimited one-on-one -on -one instruction with a native Spanish speaker, is paying their instructors very, very poorly. I think it has, seems like it may have improved slightly, but still in the two US dollar per hour range. And this is something that the CEO actually has not denied on Reddit. He did address one of the comments that um, discussed this and basically said that in local currency, that that is not bad and all kinds of different things, which, you know, we'll get into that a little bit more. Despite the currency, having crashed in Venezuela, the cost of living has not crashed. So despite them talking about all these differences in pay rates and whether that, you know, is, you can't assess it in US dollars and all of this stuff, you can assess it in comparison to the cost of living. And that's poverty wages no matter how you are slicing it. You know, obviously living in the US, participating in the economy here, I am causing exploitation literally every single day of my life. Even just paying my taxes is causing harm all over the planet. If that's something that you don't care about, then this entire conversation is not going to be for you. But for people who do care about it, I think this is an area that's kind of an under-discussed uh, thing. There was an article in Boston Review that I highly, highly recommend that is called Who Pays for Cheap Language Instruction? And it talks about the kind of surge of these low cost um, instructional platforms and also about things like Duolingo, like free freemium apps and that sort of thing. So ex excellent article, highly, highly recommend it. And it does talk as well about these kind of, I guess you could call them like online class farms where People in other countries are paid very uh, relatively low wages to teach people in relatively wealthier countries a language, usually probably English or Spanish. <laughs> For one thing, they are the most um, sought after languages in a lot of countries. Like obviously the US is the biggest market for a lot of things, probably including online classes, I would imagine and the most commonly learned second language here is by far Spanish. So, and then obviously around the world, people are learning English. So for me, the factors that I have always kind of considered regarding pay in order to kind of equalize things because it is so complicated to think about across different currencies and across different costs of living. For me, what I have thought about and what I have tried to evaluate different platforms on is A, I want the actual hourly rate that they are receiving to be competitive to what they could be getting freelance or if they were setting their own rates. Because, you know, typically they're going to try to set their own rates at something that they can live off of. So it's kind of a surrogate factor for your cost of living since they know their cost of living better than I know their cost of living. Obviously this does still require some kind of like reality check every once in a while potentially uh, because there are still people in desperate enough situations that they're gonna set their own rates to be desirable, not necessarily what they actually need. So, you know, you can kind of check in 
online to see the different costs of living of different places, but this is kind of what I have always looked at. So for example, you know, Babel Life pays somewhere around 12 to 13 euros, I think. Most people in Mexico or other higher cost of living Latin American countries are going to set them somewhere in that ballpark. And even some teachers in Spain will still work for Babel Live because of that trade-off of having a lot more guaranteed hours, not having to drum up your own clients, all kinds of things like that. I think anyone who has worked freelance or um, any kind of contract job is, a, is familiar with that trade-off of potentially higher rates setting out on your own, but a lot more instability. So that is one factor that I always think about. And then another factor is that I want it to not be a huge reduction between what the consumer is paying and what the um, employee or contractor or whatever is receiving. So I don't want a platform to be taking huge fees. If it's a a uh, group class, a group of five students might be paying anywhere from 40 to 80 euros for a class while the person teaching the class is making 11 euros. That kind of gap absolutely does not sit right with me and so that's another factor that I think about how much of what I'm paying is the person actually getting. So on that note, platforms like Preply are a little bit less ideal than platforms like Italki because Preply takes 33% from new teachers and then it's like a it's a scale based on how long you've been teaching or how many hours of teaching you've gotten and then they minimize out at 18%. They will always take 18%, whereas Italki takes a flat 15%. There's also other things to keep in mind, like Preply always requires their teachers to teach free trial lessons. Like the student is still likely paying for the lesson, but Preply is taking all of that money. Whereas Italki is the opposite. Even if someone gets a free credit for a trial lesson with their membership sign up, the teacher still gets paid. Um, so there are just differences that I think are good to note. So I know that on that note, there will be a lot of people who don't think that it's our responsibility as consumers to be paying attention to these things. Um, and I just so strongly disagree with that. If you live in like the global north, in the west, whatever you want to call it, if you live especially in the US, Canada, the UK, Western Europe, like we, we are the consumers that are being catered to and the decisions that we make or allow to be made for us will drive so much. And it is, it is important for us to be making ethical decisions. Like the companies are not going to make ethical decisions for us. So it's important for us to bear this in mind. Like I've seen so many people and there will be some probably on the screen from reddit that are like well why is that our problem like everything in the world is unethical now like all consumer goods are produced unethically this is providing labor to people who need it blah 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 i think it's just so important to not let yourself fall into that mindset it is more important to pay attention to this because everything is unethical now like you have to you can't look away from anything now because you'd think that something as like luxury based for most of us here as learning a language using paid resources on the internet would be something that you wouldn't have to worry about you know like you'd think that this would be there would be built in like professionalism and standards here but there's absolutely not so in some ways it's actually easier to try to be ethical in this because it's so optional like this is such a luxury item for the majority of us anyway in the u.s at least speaking for myself i definitely have found myself having this mindset of entitlement and i know that that word is so used to the point where maybe it doesn't mean anything to us anymore but yeah this sense of entitlement to whatever we want 
to buy. Like even this platform that was charging so much to pay so little, so many people on Reddit were talking about how expensive it was. And I do think that there is something to be said for quality. You know, obviously if you are paying poverty wages, you are potentially not getting the highest quality of work. I'm sure partially because of the over <laughs> work and exploitation that was taking place and also that you're just not attracting as high a quality of people because they don't want to work for those wages. So, you know, I think there's absolutely something to be said there, but the price of this service was anywhere between like a hundred and two hundred dollars a month for unlimited one-on-one -on -one classes. That is not expensive. Potentially it's depending on some people paying and not using it, and I'm sure that does happen. I don't know. And I know that, you know, I'm potentially absolutely guilty of this myself because I use Bubble Live, um, but again, I do know what those people are making. And, you know, with the group classes, you could be potentially paying significantly less per class and the person's still making a livable wage because there's, you know, three, four, six of you in the class all contributing. I just think that we have to be considerate of how we do that. And again, this is talking to people in wealthy countries. I'm not talking about you know, a Brazilian person paying a, an Argentinian person a reasonable rate for both of those countries to learn Spanish or to learn Portuguese. Like, that is obviously a completely different thing. I'm talking about someone who has an earning power bickering over dollar amounts that they have no business bickering over, in addition to giving money to companies that, for all appearances, seem to be intensely exploiting their employees. We should not be getting letting business mm, lingo and uh, capitalistic mm, bullshit convince us that that is right. Like, come on. So yeah, I think there is potentially a bigger, you know, kind of philosophical question, like I said, about the kind of currency differences. And I did have an interesting discussion with, about that in the in immersion discord. So to any of you who participated in that discussion, thank you. But, you know, that's, I feel like, a, a more minor issue other than the fact that it does make it difficult for people in higher currencies who also want to teach that language. Like, you know, if you have, if you live in the United States and you teach Spanish, or if you live in Spain and you teach Spanish, you're going to have a harder time in the market because of all the people who can charge so much less. Um, same with English. It, it goes on and on. So, I mean, there are factors to consider there, but then I think there's a, an entirely other issue of these companies that are just vastly screwing over their employees, both in the super, super low wages and the overhead on these prices that is just crazy for the teacher pay. Like, if you have a really, really, really expensive service, and your teachers are not making competitive wages, that is cr that is wild. You are, that just should not be happening. So I will have some links below to things that I read about for this uh, discussion and definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you in the next video.